Chapter 1. The Burns' Tomb It was noon in the little village of Mainville, and a sorrowful group of people were standing around the Burns' tomb. Joseph Burns was dead. When dying, he had given the following strange orders. Before you put my body in the tomb, drop this ball onto the floor at a spot marked A. He then handed a small golden ball to the rector. The people greatly regretted his death. After the funeral services were finished, Mr. Dobson, the rector, said, My friends, I will now gratify the last wishes of the deceased. So saying, he descended into the tomb to lay the ball on a spot marked A. Soon the funeral party began to be impatient, and after time Mr. Chaws Green, the lawyer, descended to make a search. Soon he came up with a frightened face and said, Mr. Dobson is not there! Chapter 2 Mysterious Mr. Bell It was three ten o'clock in the afternoon when the doorbell of Dobson Mansion rang loudly, and the servant on going to the door found an elderly man with black hair and side whiskers. He asked to see Miss Dobson. Upon arriving in her presence, he said, Miss Dobson, I know where your father is, and for 10,000 euros, I will restore him. Mr. Bell, said Miss Dobson, will you excuse me for a moment? Certainly, replied Mr. Bell. In a short time, she returned and said, Mr. Bell, I understand you. You have abducted my father and hold him for ransom. Chapter 3 At the Police Station It was 3.20 o'clock in the afternoon when the telephone bell at the North End Police Station rang furiously, and Gibson, the telephone man, inquired what was the matter. Have found out about father's disappearance, a woman's voice said. I'm Miss Dobson and father has been abducted. Send King John. King John was a famous western detective. Just then a man rushed in and shouted, Oh terrors! Come to the graveyard! Chapter 4. The West Window Now let us return to the Dobson Mansion. Mr. Bell was rather taken aback by Miss Dobson's plain speaking. But when he recovered his speech, he said, Don't put it so plain, Miss Dobson, for I... He was interrupted by the entrance of King John, who with a brace of revolvers in his hands, barred all egress by the doorway. But quicker than thought, Bell sprang to a west window and jumped. Chapter 5. The Secret of the Grave Now let us return to the station house. After the excited visitor had calmed somewhat, he could tell his story straighter. He had seen three men in his graveyard shouting, Bell! Bell! Where are you, old man? And acting very suspiciously, he then followed them, and they entered the Burns' tomb. He then followed them in, and they touched a spring at a point marked A, and then disappeared. I wish King John were here, said Gibson. What's your name? John Spratt, replied the visitor. Chapter 6. The Chase for Bell Now let us return to the Dobson Mansion again. King John was utterly confounded at the sudden movement of Bell, but when he recovered from his surprise, his first thought was of Chase. Accordingly, he started in pursuit of the abductor. He tracked him down to the RR station and found to his dismay that he had taken the train for Kent, a large city towards the south, and between which and Mainville there existed no telegraph or telephone. The train had just started. Chapter 7. The Negro Hackman The Kent train started at 10.35, and ab about 10.36, an excited, dusty, and tired man rushed into that Mainville hack office and said to a Negro hackman who was standing by the door, If you can take me to Kent in 15 minutes, I will give you a dollar. I don't see how I'm to get there, said the Negro. I haven't got a decent pair of horses, and I haven't... Two dollars, shouted the traveler. All right, said the hackman. Chapter 8. Bell Surprise It was 11 o'clock at Kent. All the stores were closed but one, a dingy, dirty little shop down at the West End. It lay between Kent Harbor and the Kent and Mainville Railroad. In the front room, a shabbily dressed person of doubtful age was conversing with a middle-aged woman with gray hair. I have agreed to do the job, Lindy, he said. Bell will arrive at 11.30, and the carriage is ready to take him down to the wharf, where a ship for Africa sails tonight. But if King John were to come, queried Lindy. Then we'd get nabbed, and Bell would be hung, replied the man. Just then a rap sounded at the door. Are you Bell? inquired Lindy. Yes, was the response. And I caught the 1035 and King John got left. So we are all right. At 1140 the party reached the landing and saw a ship loom up in the darkness. The Kedive of Africa was painted on the hull. And just as they were to step on board, a man stepped forward in the darkness and said, 
John Bell, I arrest you in Queen's name. It was King John. Chapter 9, The Day of the Trial. The day of the trial had arrived, and a crowd of people had gathered around the little grove, which served for a courthouse in the summer, to hear the trial of John Bell and the charge of kidnapping Mr. Bell, said the judge. What is the secret of the Burns tomb? I will tell you this much, said Bell. If you go into the tomb and touch a certain spot marked A, you will find out. Now where's Mr. Dobson? queried the judge. Here, said a voice behind them and the figure of Mr. Dobson himself loomed up in the doorway. How did you get here, was chorused. Tis a long story, said Dobson. Chapter 10, Dobson's Story. When I went down into the tomb, said Dobson, everything was darkness. I could see nothing, but finally I discerned the letter A, printed in white on the onyx floor. I dropped the ball on the letter, and immediately a trap door opened, and a man sprang up. It was this man, here, he said, pointing at Bell, who stood trembling on the prisoner's dock. And he pulled me down into a brilliantly lighted and palatial apartment where I have lived until today. One day a young man rushed in and exclaimed, The secret is revealed, and was gone. He did not see me. Once Bell left his key behind, and I took the impression in wax. And the next day was spent in filing keys to fit the lock. The next day my key fitted. And the next day, which is today, I escape. Chapter 11. The Mystery Unveiled. Why did the late J. Burns ask you to put the ball there? Queried the judge. To get me into trouble, replied Dobson. He and Francis Burns, his brother, have plotted against me for years, and I knew not in what way they would harm me. Seize Francis Burns, yelled the judge. Chapter 12. Conclusion. Francis Burns and John Bell were sent to prison for life. Mr. Dobson was cordially welcomed by his daughter, who, by the way, had become Miss King John, and her Lindy and her accomplice were sent to Newgate for 30 days as aiders and abettors of a criminal escape.